One of the ways that Christians try to say that Jesus appears inside of the Hebrew scriptures is by saying that he appears as an angel. And one of the texts that they use to try to justify this is Joshua chapter 5, verse 14. So let's examine the verse and let's see what we come away with. A young man, he said, Lo, no, ki ani tzar tzava Hashem, but I am the captain of the host of the Lord. Atavasi, now I have come. But ye pull Yehoshua, and Yehoshua fell, El Panov, on his face, Arza, to the earth. Vishtahu, and he prostrated himself. Vyoimer lo, and he said to him, Ma adoini madabe el abdoi, what does my Lord say to his servant? The KJV writes this verse as, and he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, I am now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship. And said unto him, What saith my Lord, with a capital L, to give it prestige, to make it refer to Jesus, unto a servant. All right, so our question is on this word that I translated as prostrated. Does it mean worship, as KJV wants you to believe? And what about this word Lord? Is it supposed to be with a capital L? Is it referring to God? The first source that I thought of is over in 1 Samuel 25 verse 23, where we see that Abigail, she sees King David, and what does she do? She falls on her face and she prostrates herself on the ground. It's the same words used there, only in the feminine form. So she fell on her face before David and she bowed to the ground. She prostrated herself. Now these are two human beings. Everybody agrees this. Was Abigail worshiping David? The answer is absolutely no. Now, prostration is not something that is common in Western culture, but in biblical times, it was a normal thing. It was a sign of respect. Just like in Japan, people often bow themselves, even today. It's a different culture. So we have to understand that this word, it is simply an act of prostration. It's a physical movement. Now, the other thing about the KJV is it capitalized the letter L in the word, my master, my lord, but it's the same word that's used over in Genesis when Jacob is speaking to Esau. La adoini la Esau, he says. It just means my Lord or my master in the sense of an honorific for a human being. It never refers to the name of God. So we see absolutely nothing inside Joshua 14 that would seem to refer to God, God forbid, coming down in human form or an angel form. It doesn't apply. And this simply speaks about Joshua giving respect to the angel who is an emissary of God. Now, let's ask one more question. Can this theory that Jesus appeared as an angel even fit within the New Testament narrative? Now, again, I don't believe the New Testament is a holy book, but we still have to examine, does their claim even make sense according to Christianity? And the answer is absolutely no. Let's flip over to Hebrews chapter 1. In verse 4, it says that Jesus was being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. This verse is telling us that Jesus was created higher than the angels. He's not an angel. He's above that. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to my father, and he shall be to me a son. You know, the New Testament author is saying that Jesus is not an angel because God never said that to any angel. One more time, see verse 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thine footstool. Now the New Testament is very clear that its theology is that Jesus is not an angel. So let's knock off this idea that Jesus can be seen all over the Hebrew scriptures. We don't see it according to the holy Hebrew scriptures and we don't even see it according to the New Testament narrative. So let's just completely jettison this idea. Jesus appears nowhere as an angel.